you need some germs on you. Some germs. Mm -hmm. I'm very germy. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Abington School Committee for Tuesday, January 2nd. Uh, could everyone rise for a salute to the flag, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, before we begin, I'd like to make note that um, our first our bu uh, public budget hearing for fiscal year 2019 will be held at 7.30. So we will work through the agenda, but at 7.30, um, we will then have to go over to our budget hearing. Um, before we start today, I would like to have Peter talk about the problems we encountered with the cold weather this morning. So um, last night, um, before the cold weather hit, after the vacation week, we did some checking of buildings and parking lots, um, some follow-up on transportation, and all systems were ready to go. As a matter of fact, the last update we got was 6 o'clock this morning when we were told all of our buses were ready to go and um, we should be able to start on time. Then, um, about a half an hour after our first students go to bus stops, we got a phone call from the bus company telling us that some of the buses were stalled and unable to get out of uh, the parking lot. At that point, we didn't know which buses were on the road, which buses were late, and which buses would be indefinitely stalled. So quickly made a phone call telling people that we were having school on time because we also had people dropping kids off. However, that the buses would be late. So I want to apologize to people for the late notice. We had no idea that that was the condition until half an hour into this morning's bus run. Then um, did the best we could. Buses picked up uh, kids wherever they were, when they could. Um, the, the later you were in the pickup loop, the better off uh, the system was able to recover itself and pick you up closer to on time. Um, but that's not a condition anybody wants, especially uh, in this weather. So um, <coughs> follow-up conversations have taken place with the bus company. Um, they've outlined a number of things that they're doing differently. Uh, they had the personnel on site to start the buses the night before and to start the buses early this morning, but what I was told they were missing was some of the service vehicles that needed to be in place uh, to provide uh, jump starts to vehicles. And so they have assured me those are in place now. So um, with their uh, better preparedness, the fact that it's going to be at least 10, 15 degrees warmer tomorrow and the buses were running all day today, I, I am... Um, hopeful that that will be the last time that ever happens. But we want to at least explain to people why they got a phone call uh, so late into the high school uh, start of school. Um, so I want to make sure people knew that. Peter, will students are, are tardy be marked tardy, or is it an excuse tardiness due to our fault? Yeah, it was our fault we didn't mark those people late. Good question. All right, does anyone else have any questions? All right, thank you, Peter. Um, we'll start off with our hearing of visitors. Do we have any visitors that would like to be heard this evening? No. Okay, moving on, reading and approval of minutes for November 28, 2017. Anyone have any questions, changes, comments? All right, if not, can I have a motion to approve the minutes for November 28th? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Yes, one, ab one abstain. All right. Moving on. Um, report <coughs> to subcommittees 2016-2017 evaluation of the superintendent of schools. Um, actually, it's the 2017 because we changed the dates on when um, evaluations would take place. Um, I, As I'm passing these out, I'd like to... Um, Thank everyone for the effort they put into filling out the evaluation form and getting it to me. I know there were some issues. Um, there. And deciphering the form and on um, being able to email the form to me. Um, wait, doesn't get a copy of the document. 
All right, everyone filled out the same evaluation form and emailed, sent, or dropped off, or spoke to me on the phone, uh, whichever way it was possible to get it done, um, filled out the same form. And what you see here is a compilation of everyone's assessments, comments, and recommendations. Um, and it's divided by um, the three goals that Peter set and that we approved last January. Um, so the evaluation covers from January 2017 through December 2017. And uh, at our next meeting, after since Peter is receiving this now, he should have his goals for us for 2018. Um, the first, <laughs> Peter's first uh, goal was to reconfigure and transition the students and staff pre-K through 12 into existing and new infrastructure for the 2017-2018 uh, school year. Um, as far as goal accomplishment was concerned, um, two members of the board rated his uh, achievement as exemplary and three rated him as proficient. In terms of com commendations, the pl planning, coordination, and impl implementation of the move that involved all of the Abington Public Schools was executed seamlessly and flawlessly. Um, each of these commendations or recommendations that are listed are taken directly from the forms that everyone on the board filled out, and I did not put names with them. Um, the opening of the new school building exemplifies Superintendent Schaefer's knowledge of educational requirements our communication skills and transition undertaking. Um, the transition that occurred went as well as, if not better, than could have been expected. Communicating with parents, staff, students, and the community throughout the process has been key and on point. Moving the entire staff and student body at the same time to new classrooms, new buildings, a year ahead of what had been planned was, to say the least, a daunting task. As a result, the smooth transition we experienced was amazing. Um, recommendations are that work should be continued on bus routes and start and dismissal times for the elementary schools. Our configuring new start and dismissal times is imperative and minor changes to school times should be explored. And I think that was a common theme and I think it's something that Peter is already working on himself. Um, the second student learning goal, improve, um, improve student achievement across all content areas, grade levels, and subgroups, and assessments developed locally and as measured by the MCAS test for students in the aggregate, 1% aggregate, above the state medium SGP student growth percentile. Additionally, the Beaverbrook Elementary School's high needs student group will demonstrate academic improvement uh, for movement out of level three. Uh, Goal accomplishment, two members rated him as exemplary and three as proficient. Um, I don't want to read this whole document to everyone, but commendations, it was significant improvement achieved across all but one group reflects Mr. Schaefer's commitment <coughs> to not only student education, but also support to his leadership team. I'd also like to make note, um, Mr. Schaefer and the staff should be commended for the major improvement in MCAS scores as well as the recognition received from the state for the improvement of scores at Abington High School. Uh, moving on to number three, here's professional practice goal. Improve district and school lines of communication of expectations, policies, protocols, successes, and challenges by 20% through electronic and other means of communication and all five members of the board rated Peter proficient in that um, achievement of that goal. Commendations, um, communication has taken a major step forward this year. Mr. Schaefer has demonstrated exceptional communication skills with parents and the community and has been a marked improvement in communication throughout the district year over year. Um, there are some recommend uh, recommendations there as well um, in a ways that an even um, better means of communication could be established. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments for me or for Peter? No, I don't. No. <laughs> um, so, uh, Peter, do you have any questions? Um, I want to thank uh, people for their input, especially um, both the accommodations and the recommendations. Uh, both of them are important. We haven't accomplished anything as a system that hasn't included a faculty, a staff, and administration, uh, parents, 
our, obviously our students and, and, a, and a school committee that's about kids, um, this group of people. I, pr I appreciate being able to work with all of those groups. I feel lucky to be able to do that. And that's what makes the things that we have to do um, um, things we can tackle. Because there's a lot of work left to do. But as I think of all of the groups that we're all working with together in Abington, um, there's no shortage of people who care deeply about this work and about kids. So um, we will get at this next phase of work. Thank you. And I would like to let members of the committee know that I've already talked to Peter about the problems that we had with the uh, transmission of the form, and we're going to do a, a better job with that next year so it's a little easier for everyone to get it done. All right, moving on. Uh, proposed website accessibility policy. I don't know if Wendy has any input. Um, I had pneumonia at the time that the subcommittee met, so. Um, I don't have input, actually. I think <coughs> Peter would be the best to explain this. So okay. we can understand properly. <laughs> so this is basically just um, um, what's most important is the product that's out on the website, that it's accessible to people with uh, disabilities. This is particularly about people with uh, a visual impairment so that um, what, what happens is, is when, they, when they toggle over a picture on the website, a word description comes up, let's say it's students working, so that they have a reader at home and they're visually impaired, that reader will tell them what that's a picture of as they look at our website. And so this is the, this is the policy um, that, that includes that um, we'll make sure that it's accessible, not just for people who are visually impaired, but, but people with disabilities uh, to the extent uh, possible. And um, this just, uh, this completes that. It gives a process by which it'll be reviewed and updated. Um, and that's, that's really what this policy is about. All right. Anyone have any questions? How often is it reviewed, Peter? Cons uh, formally, two or three times a year. Uh, in terms of um, the majority of the review is m about content, making sure that old things that are posted are taken down because it gets so confusing. Mm -hmm. um, informally, all the time. I mean, I think everybody, because w when people find a link that doesn't work, they tell us and we fix it right away. Thank you. Any other questions? No. <coughs> All right, we're looking for a <coughs> motion to approve the website accessibility policy as presented. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, did you do that? No, I don't think you did. Is oh. there a motion on the evaluation? All right, can we back up one step? I believe I need to have a uh, motion to approve the evaluation that we went through for Peter. Yeah, I think we need to accept it. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone want to make a motion to accept the evaluation of the superintendent of schools? I'll make a motion. <coughs> Excuse me. And someone to second it? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Sorry about that. Do you want to do the... Um, schedule these prior to we're going to do some um, okay let's okay um, why don't we move on yep okay all right um, <coughs> looking at the clock we have about 15 minutes before we have to go into our budget hearing so we're going to take a look at the update on system-wide schedule processes. So um, it was at a school committee meeting last year. We talked about start times. And um, there were a number of different scenarios we went through. I've, I've brought updates on the process to the committee, uh, I think it was two months ago or so. Uh, thought it would be a good idea <coughs> just to do another process, just a check on um, our planning and um, what our priorities are and just to make sure people understand what some of the challenges are because I think the more that people understand this the better off we will all be because we get better questions and a, and a more robust discussion about it so um, 
Start time priorities. We have a handout here. Um, we heard you, or I heard you, we heard you, that we're looking for an increased start time uh, and, 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 and a gap, basically, between the Woodsdale and the Beaver Brook. Um, time between the start and end of those two schools is important for people that have got kids at multiple buildings getting between the two places with the traffic in town and, and the stress involved. Um, secondly, that uh, it would be better if our Woodsdale and our Beaverbrook school dismissed earlier. That means they have to come in earlier, um, but it would be better if they dismissed earlier. We're also looking, um, something we have to do is that there has to be at least a 20 minute gap between the high school and the middle school. And, and, and the reason for that is um, it just takes that much time uh, to clear the, the, the campus out here. I'm going to talk about some of the challenges in the next page, though. And then we're looking for an Abington start time between 7.50 and 8.15. Uh, I would say, basically, that that's really the order of, of the priorities um, as we've had the discussion. I don't know that any one person um, would, would necessarily agree that that's the order of the priorities, but I think the group as a whole, in terms of consensus, that was the consensus of the group <laughs> in terms of what people are looking for us to do. So some of the factors that people should be aware about of. Um, the length of the school day is important because at the secondary level, we have 990 hours in a school year. And at the elementary level, we have 900. So there's a difference in the length of the day. And the reason that, that that's challenges is, is because we, we're bringing basically the secondary in first and the elementary in after. That, that um, we're running into difficulties with our tiered bus system, um, getting those students out at the end of the day because of the time of, of the start for the secondary level. And you can't just flip them. You just can't flip the elementary with the secondary to fix that. Um, today's a, Today is, is a day that it, it really wasn't light um, until uh, light until about seven o'clock in the morning. We've got kids going to bus stops early in the morning. I'm concerned about our our littlest students uh, being out there in the dark in the in the darkest parts of the winter. Um, the distance between the schools and the length of the routes is a challenge because we really don't want kids on buses. Forty five minutes is pretty long. Uh, we, we, we need, we try to get it uh, that or less. Um, we have a tiered bus system. So the buses do one loop with one school and then they'll do another loop with another school and you're trying, we're actually trying to get three different loops in, in place. <coughs> that saves the maximum amount of money for the district. And just so that I can be clear about money saved, the money we save in the system goes back to kids. and. Uh, program, teachers, resources, and materials. So we don't take the saved money home. Um, we just have to make decisions about scarce resources and make sure we're putting the tax dollars that, that you give to us where you get the most bang for the buck with your kids. So um, if, we, if someone could write us checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars, we could fix the, the start times very, very easily. But I don't, I don't think people would, you wouldn't want us doing that because it would mean sacrifices in other places in the district. Um, I've talked about a little bit about 18 and Glenowitz. That intersection, that, in, that infrastructure just doesn't allow for us to clear this campus out in less than about 20 minutes, especially at the end of the day with pickup. It takes 20 to 25 minutes uh, for it to clear. Um, people, just in terms of pickup, it takes longer. It takes longer to get kids into cars. People are waiting for kids. It's, it's more congested. In the morning, people pull up and, and kids get out. It's obviously a faster process. Um, and then um, another factor, as I said earlier, is students with multiple schools. Another piece here that's not on the slide is um, one of the sins that we've um, created, that we've made, is that we've shared staff between buildings. The reason we've done that is because we're a small district. We have a lot to be <coughs> proud of in terms of the course offering. I was thinking about the middle school schedule just the other day. So our middle schools have a compulsory, our middle schoolers have a compulsory schedule. That means they have to take the following. Math has different levels. There's an accelerated level and there's an honors level. There's um, computers, there's STEAM, there's band, there's chorus, there's music. There's not just music. There's art, there's health, there's PE. 
there's Spanish, there's English, there's science, there's social studies. So I just rattled off about a dozen different programmatic things that, that I think we should all be very proud of that our middle schoolers experience. And that create, and we do that because we share staff. Now we're trying to break that apart so that the schedule can run more independently at the high school and the middle school without losing um, that healthy program of studies. That's a difficult task. But when, when, you're, when you're thinking about dropping your kids off and picking them up, you wouldn't know that that's one of the things that we're trying to wrestle with in terms of all these schedule problems and moving pieces. It's, it's just, it's more complicated than just um, worrying about the coming and the going of traffic. We also have to worry about the impacts on the program and how that affects kids in terms of changing staff schedules. Probably want to spend a little more time on tiered transportation costs. I'm going to ask Felicia to help me with that. I, so I talked about it in a general way. Do you mind? Yeah. Just <coughs> So you don't have to look at my back. So part of our um, bus contract and our bus pricing, or the way that they do price buses, is by tiering them. And we thought that this was important to understand because we talk about the cost of um, different scenarios. Right now, for example, bus one is a three-tier bus this year. So it does a high school run, does a middle school run, and then it does a Woodsdale run. Bus 16, only does a Woodsdale run. So those are examples of two different buses. The cost for a three-tier bus, or in this case, bus section, not bus one, but bus two, would be $72,000 a year, or $24,000 per run. So to do the high school run, $24,000 to do the middle school run, and then to do the Woodsdale run. The cost for a bus to do a one-tier run, or that one Woodsdale bus, is, um, is 50, over $59,000 a year for just that one run. So when we are doing bus uh, start times and transportation, we try to do multiple runs. Um, and we have a majority of our buses <coughs> do at least two runs. If not, we have a number of them that are able to do three runs. Um, bus one, two, and four right now are three run bus, uh, three tier buses. Um, so when we're looking at, like I said, when we're looking at start and end times, um, instead of just uh, having all the buses independent of one another, we're trying to do it so that they have time to get to the next school. And um, for example, that, that's part of the um, issue that we've talked about throughout the year with Beaver Brook and buses getting there later. It's because they're doing another run before that. Um, we made some changes at the middle school to get the bus students out earlier, um, and then they, then the um, traffic issues at the light, uh, and then getting them to Beaver Brook because um, that way there are two tier or three tier bus as opposed to just the one tier. So this is not to say that we don't think that there will be some improvements, and that um, changes are aren't coming because they are. Um, we just thought it, all of these things are in the mix and wanted to make sure people were aware that, that, that I think we heard everyone, the community and our parents and the school committee that increasing that gap between the, the Beaverbrook and the Woodsdale is important. Getting them in earlier, I think so people can make the train and also getting them home earlier in the evening is important for the, for the Beaverbrook and the Woodsdale. Um, and then just so you're aware, we also have to wrestle with uh, the gap between the high school and the middle school so that the campus can uh, flow with traffic. And then, and then I, we haven't given up on the, on the high school late start time. Um, I think we either need to be able to do that or, or come up with a, with a dollar amount to do it. And then if, you know, um, depending on what that final dollar amount is, we'd, we'd be able to make a, a more intelligent decision. So, people have questions or anything? Or? I want to sort of check the temperature of the committee on this. Probably use a bad word <laughs> for yeah. today. I think those are the things that have been discussed, and it's good to know Thanks. that you and the administration are working on trying to solve some of those issues. Um, Peter, do you have a timeline for final decisions? I'm hoping we can bring recommendations to the committee at the next meeting, which will be the end of January. 
I definitely think the priorities, uh, as you said, that depending on who you talk to, what age their child is, the, everyone's priority is going to be different. Right. You know, but overall, that as a district, that's what we agree on. Thank you, because I'm looking. I want to. I want to confirm that because we've been working in this direction. I don't want to obviously go the wrong way. I think those are good priorities. I don't think there is any schedule that's going to suit every family um, and every child on every level. Um, but all we can do is what's best for kids. <coughs> and hopefully we can get that. Um, we have five minutes. Just for building update? Sure. Okay. School building update. We have, if you've, uh, if you've been around the site in the last two weeks, you will notice that we have many more signs that have gone up and directional signs and where <coughs> directional signs are really the, or the hallmark of the um, outside of the building over the last few weeks in terms of the two-way coming in off Glinowitz down to the preschool um, entrance, um, the entry into the bus loop uh, that parents can, can drop off in the bus loop if their student is late, as long as there aren't buses present. And uh, I think that's an important caveat to that. If there are buses there dropping off or picking up, then um, cars should not be entering the bus loop. But um, I do have to say that that is very clear. We were late today because of the bus thing. <laughs> so I dropped off and I was like, oh, perfect. Because I was thinking I had to you know, loop around. Good. Good. We still have. Uh, some line painting that has to be completed. Um, but I think that if you come in the wrong way off of the traffic circle on the way to the library, it is, if you miss the 10 do not enter signs, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, uh, then you're not really paying attention. So hopefully that's, that we've cleared, we've cleared that up. Um, I, I just want to talk a little bit about some other hiccups we had today um, at the high school and middle school around uh, room temperatures. Um, we had, uh, in the first thing this morning, uh, a number of classrooms that hovered around 60 degrees and were immediately on the phone with um, our engineers and our um, programmers around, um, around the system and we believe that, that they came this afternoon, changed out some equipment. Uh, we're also keeping um, the building in an occupied mode uh, starting much earlier um, tomorrow morning so we're not anticipating uh, the same cooler temperatures as we had this morning. Um, we continue to work on punch list items. There's, yes. Students were moved from those areas so their teeth weren't chattering and yes. cold. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there, were, there was a, a number of classrooms one, in one area that were particularly more cold than, than other areas. Um, and, uh, but I, again, I just, I want to assure you that that was something that was jumped on at 7.10 this morning, or 6.30 this morning, actually, when we first heard about it. Um, and again, we had people checking the buildings over the weekend, and uh, as, as late as 10 o'clock last night, it looked as if all systems were go. Um, sometimes having all the electronics and programming in the world, just want to go and flip that switch and turn it on. So, um, but we're working, I, I, we're working through that. Um, they're continuing to finish punch list items. Um, the uh, contractor was hoping that they'd have the field uh, completed before the ground froze, but it doesn't look like that happened. So um, as soon as there's thawing, they will have crews back out there working on that, and they'll see that as soon as the weather uh, turns for the spring, which hopefully will be very early. In the spring. Just have one question. You mentioned equipment replacement was there a failure or there was uh, there was a controller that there was that was questionable in one of the units so they jumped it out that's my understanding and the reason the reason nobody knew was because the the evening temperatures were set and appropriately set and where they should be and then it kicks on to ramp up that saves money then it kicks on to ramp up the heat to a, a more a, a more comfortable condition and that's the that's the jump that didn't happen in, in the system. It's like you turn your house back when right. you're sleeping and um, turn it back up, and, and it's a so that didn't happen in, with one of the um, the uh, energy recovery units. So it was just one section of the building. It was one section of the building. 
Um, anyone else have any questions? <coughs> okay. Um, thank you, Felicia. Uh, it is time for us to go from open session <coughs> into our budget hearing. Do we need a uh, yes. roll call? Do need a roll call? I don't think you need a roll call. Okay. Uh, motion to go into our uh, preliminary budget hearing. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Peter so that uh, we can go through. Our so um, <clears throat> you should have a copy of this PowerPoint that Felicia's putting up on the computer. You have to. Yep. So for the FY 2019 uh, budget process, there's some assumptions that, that people should understand. Um, this budget includes free full day kindergarten for all of our for all of our residents who want to take advantage of it. The current fee based kindergarten program limits the participation to those who can afford it. And so this would be a free full day program. Secondly, there are certain built in or fixed costs fixed costs that will automatically uh, increase our budget. We'll talk about those when we get to them. And then the, along with the building project, we're able to spend uh, just over about half a million dollars on, on a one-to-one -one initiative for our students, um, probably from grade seven to 12, depending on our final pricing and planning. This is one-shot money that this district gets. And if in order, so that's, that's not operational money, that's money, that's a checkbook that comes with the building that, that we have this one opportunity to, to use effectively for kids. This budget includes the operational costs to um, do that the right way for our kids uh, in terms of the rollout and the implementation. So that's, that's factored into this budget. We'll talk about that more specifically when I get there. Um, so in terms of new positions, um, our, our recommendation begins, uh, and this is a prelim, I wanna, I wanna preface this, this is a preliminary budget. This is not the final budget, this is what's proposed at this time. Between now and uh, June, there will be um, time for comment, questions, um, reconsideration, reordering, uh, fine tuning the numbers, because this is a snapshot in time of our budget as of the first week in January, two things will happen. We'll know more about funding from the federal government, the state, and our local government, and our numbers will come more and more into focus as we get closer because, again, these are, these are like trying to estimate your household bills for next year as of, as of today. You don't know exactly what those bills are in your, in your home, but you have, a pretty fair enough, you have a fair enough idea that you can start to, to uh, put down some, some thoughtful estimates. These are those thoughtful estimates in terms of our budget process. So the first piece that we're recommending is, is a teacher for uh, a substantially separate program that we need at the middle school level. Right now, we have a, a program that takes care of our, our, ch our children with um, some challenging disabilities through our system, through the elementary level, and then it, we don't have a need for it right now at the middle school, but next year we will, and we wanna make sure that we put that program in place to accommodate those students in the district um, so that we can take care of them here in Abington. Generally speaking, if you can accommodate your children in your district, they're provided better service, um, and it's also additionally more affordable for the district to provide <coughs> that service in the district. That doesn't mean all kids' needs can be met that way, um, but these students can be, and that's why we wanna put that in place. That's a, that's a gap we currently have, but we currently have that gap because we don't have a need for it this year. Next year, because of um, the movement of students, we'll have it at the middle school. The next position is a, is a point four that's um, of a full-time equivalency. So that would be someone who, who works 40% um, to be a shared resource as a nurse across the district. So the needs of our, the medical needs of our students are greater than they've ever been before um, in terms of um, the uh, medical conditions that they have the medications that they need to take, the 
uh, we're, we're seeing an increase in the number of visits to our health offices because of the life of families. Um, sometimes kids are waiting rather than going to the minute clinic or going to their pediatrician. They're, they're sending kids to school who are ill. Um, we also have more uh, screenings and uh, data that need to be collected in our nurses' offices than ever before. Um, when someone is given a Tylenol, it needs to be recorded and then uh, documented and then because, God forbid, they were able to have a Tylenol and have an interaction with something that wasn't um, known about that creates an unsafe condition. So um, we're looking for that support across the district. But then also that person would be a substitute in the district um, when our nurses are out. We're, we're currently contracting the services from time to time of a private vendor who provides this. Those are expensive services, and if you can get um, people that you're familiar with to take care of your kids in your district, it's a better condition for, um, for the kids. Um, next position is an instructional technologist, technology teacher. <coughs> so teaching one-to-one -one, um, is an opportunity for us to prepare kids for life after Abington High School and I say having to school because that's the exit point, but they'd be using these computers in the middle school, whether they're going to college, whether they're going to work, whether they're going in, into, the, into the service, or where, whatever they may be doing, um, being able to effectively use technology in a critical, uh, as a critical, thoughtful person um, is essential. It is, it, is the, it is the number one skill employers are looking for. Um, also, we want to make sure that that person helps us with the delivery of the digital liter literacy standards. So this is someone who will go into classrooms and work with teachers, preparing lessons in the one-to-one -one environment so that so at a cl with a classroom of laptops and a teacher um, at the secondary level, um, it's done effectively. It's not just um, watching YouTube videos of cats. Or, or whatever whatever people distract themselves with in the internet. It's, it's very thoughtful, uh, rigorous work um, done well. Um, an English teacher, we have an increased enrollment at Abington High School across the district. We've seen an increase of about 105 students. At Abington High School, we have about 70 new students this year alone. We're anticipating that that number will increase at Abington High School by about 30. That's an estimate. Um, we currently have four and a half English teachers at Abington High School. It's the one subject there. It's the of the of the I'll call it the major subjects. It's the one that is the thinnest. We're worried about class sizes, and that's just based on actual and projected increases in enrollment. Um, another position would be um, a computer network technician. We have doubled, tripled the amount of technology in this district already. I'm not just talking about the devices that kids use. Um, with the with the with the new building, but I'm talking about the devices uh, that kids use across the district at the elementary level, at the middle level, at the high school level. At our elementary level, um, our PTOs have been very generous and provide us additional technology, and a lot of technology has moved from the middle and high school level to the elementary level. <laughs> Not only that, we've had changes in infrastructure, with uh, vast increases with with a radio system, a phone system. You see all the audio visual just in this room alone that, that, uh, and, the, and the camera, the uh, document cameras that each classroom has, um, a phone system, um, the infrastructure, and then also the software on top of that has, has tripled. We still have two people taking care of all that stuff. And now we're looking at spending a half million dollars with this one shot money on laptops for kids. In order to, to do this right, those things need to be supported. If people are frustrated because they've planned a lesson and it doesn't work, it's, it's going to um, decrease the effectiveness of this initiative. So, um, Other positions um, to be considered but not included in the preliminary budget proposal. Uh, we had recommendations uh, for a music teacher, a social studies teacher, a math teacher, a science teacher, and a guidance counselor. And I could put 20 more positions on that slide of things that it would, would be good for us to have. Um, it's important to communicate, I think, that those were considered. But the, in this initial 
proposal, this preliminary budget, they did not make the, the recommended list as we move forward. Um, Peter, quick question. If um, these are, we would love to add these also. So the prior correct. slides were ones that correct. were, our goal is on. Yes. I've got to assume that if we're looking to add full day kindergarten, we're going to need to add kindergarten teachers? Yes. Yep. Exactly right. And next slide. Next slide. Um, so uh, they could have been put in, in that first tier. Um, they are in that first tier. If you look at the next slide, um, this is the breakdown for full day kindergarten. So I want to spend a minute on this, uh, if I could. So the anticipated cost for full day kindergarten is the following. We're currently collecting a fee that uh, nets, uh, that offsets some of the costs of kindergarten. And that fee that we're collecting would be the first piece of money that would have to be um, accounted for. That's $275,955. We would need to add two additional teachers, we estimate, and the cost of that is $118,000 two additional paraprofessionals at $37,570, and then additional, um, an additional $25,000 for um, supplies, recess supervision, and other program needs. We may need to uh, find one full-time equivalency for um, health PE uh, to, to round out that program for those kids. For a, for a total of $456,525. Um, there's an asterisk there because that $456,525 is the estimated cost to add the free full day kindergarten. And in the following year for FY 2020, it's estimated that the state would reimburse us $220,000 in funding because uh, the way funding works in Massachusetts Chapter 70, after you have the students in your program, the following year, the, the state um, gives you an allotment of money for those students that you educated for the coming fiscal year. And, and that's, so you, so you can't, in our, in our budget process, um, the budget would go up the $456,525, and then in the following year, we get a reimbursement of $220,000, if that makes any sense. Now, in terms of the numbers for kindergarten, I want to explain why we went, went with two teachers for two sections. Um, what this would do is we currently have two half-day programs. We have one teacher doing an AM and a PM. So both of those would become full days, and then we would add another full day. So basically what we're doing is we'd eliminate both of the half days and add three full days because that teacher would still be with us. She'd be able to, to take one of those sections. The other section would need another teacher. And then we'd add one more section after that, if that makes any sense. Um, the reason that, again, you know, you're planning for next year and you're trying to anticipate how many people would be sending their children to you, um, we believe that those, that those half-day people would take advantage of the program in, 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 in full day. Obviously, they're going to move on, but the numbers would probably remain fairly consistent. If you wanted to do a half-day program, you'd be able to do that. You would, you would be able to have your kids leave uh, halfway through. We'd recommend you take advantage of the full day. Um, and then as we called around the private kindergartens in Abington, um, we believe that the one additional full day beyond those two halves would, would accommodate what we have. There are not a lot of students getting private full day kindergarten uh, in Abington. So that, that we think would do it in terms of numbers. Would we have space? Mm. We do would we have, have space. space? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? We, and we, we have to find it, but yeah, we do. Well, that's yeah. 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 You mentioned the option to leave yeah. halfway through. Is that standard? Like, is that something that? It, it's something I want to encourage, but if somebody wanted to have their children in a half-day program, yeah. okay. they'd have that option. Yeah. Okay. So. Anyone else have any questions about the full day kindergarten? What would be the maximum amount of students you could accept on a yearly basis? With this model? Yes. Um, How many classrooms do we have? How many kids we could have? We right now have two half days and four full days. Seven, 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 seven. <coughs> 
I'm trying to think, look at our numbers. What are you doing for a calculation, Felicia? Seven classrooms times 25 in a classroom. Yeah. So, 175. Yeah. Interestingly, that's, a, if you were to take an average of our class sizes throughout the system, some are more than that and some are less than that, it's ballpark about what our class sizes are before you get to the high school level. Yeah. I, um, I, would, I, I love this idea. We should have done it long ago. I mean, it's just a financial, you know, picture of the whole district altogether. But I would have um, concerns about their space for um, recess. And there's no gym. They don't have a gym. You know, and that's our, uh, we should have. Beaverbrook has a gym. Beaverbrook has a gym. Yeah. 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 Can, oh, OK. So would we keep the, OK, that's fine. The, um, the Beaverbrook playground can always be improved. I mean, the equipment oh, yeah. and things like that. I mean, I could I could say that about all of our playgrounds. Oh, no. To be quite honest with you, I'm not trying to be. You know. No, we have to. <coughs> so. Then that's fine. That's great. So um, you know, I spent I, we spent Felicia and I spent a lot of time on this with 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 Mike and Chris the other day. Um, you know, we we've talked about this at least at that at that initial meeting. It's the beginning of this process. This, can I, I'd like to, can I make a statement or ask a question about the whole day? Can, can you just identify yeah. yourself, please? Sure. My name is Julie Riley. Um, I live at 81 Ladies for Lane. I've actually been a resident of Abington 12 years. My girls will be going, I have twins, will be going to kindergarten in the fall. Um, I go to for the new school. My husband and I and my girls went door to door for the new school. I teach first grade in Whitman Hanson, 16 years. Um, five years I did kindergarten. And I think if we're thinking about 21st century education for all students, pre-K through 12, to look at kindergarten classes where you have students there in school for, is it two and a half hours? Two and a half hours, and that's not instructional time. Because when you have kindergartners, say, getting off the bus today, and they have to get their coats off, they have to their boots off, they have, they're losing their club, then you go in and you have to sit down, and then you think about snack time. And then it's packing up at the end of the day, and it's getting those coats back on. It's, uh, the instructional time for a two and a half hour day is not two and a half hours. So, and then you look at those kids that are in the full day, the six hour day. Um, and I guess you could say, you know, if we were all to go to work and our colleagues were expected to do the same amount of work in two and a half hours as we are, as someone else was for six hours. And then at the end of the, the year, same school year, what are those expectations? And the stress, uh, teaching first grade, seeing the stress that I see, um, and with my hands, we don't have a full day. We don't have, we have tuition based, and we have two um, half day programs. And because I don't work in the district, I can say it, I'm sure first grade teachers or kindergarten teachers here might not want to say it, but there is such a clear difference in the inadequacy children coming from two and a half hours of school to then six hours in first grade, not only academically, emotionally, because when you go from two and a half hours to then first grade, which is really what second grade, when I started teaching first grade 11 years ago, it's more like second grade now. You can, if unless you're in the classroom, you cannot even, the ex expectations are just phenomenal. So I think when you're looking at the budget, I would hope that you're really taking that piece of it into consideration because of two, what we're expecting five-year-old children to do in two and a half hours, and then their counterparts in six hours, and plus the have and have nots. You have parents that maybe choose. I would never, if I ever had a parent ask me, I do have parents ask me all the time, should I send my child to half-day kindergarten? 10 years ago, I would say, yeah, absolutely, today, Common Core State Standards, all the expectations on those kids? Absolutely not. The stress for these five and six year olds is unbelievable. Um, and then that doesn't even go along with the social emotional skills, which are really the most important. Um, and in two and a half hours when you're trying to shove in all of that academic, what happens to the social? So those kids get to first grade and they're not used to the long day. And it's, guess what, there's no block area anymore. There's no this, there's no that. It's sitting and writing, doing the same amount of work that now your counterparts have um, 
but they're used, used to it because they were already in school for, for six hours. Um, and I just feel like that's something that really isn't looked at. And then you think about the spec population too. I don't know what that would look like, the spec kids going, um, you know, I, I don't know what Abington looks like, I know what it looks like, but what it looks like. Um, but it's just something I'm obviously I'm really passionate about. And as a parent, my daughter is coming in. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to send them to full day, but my next door neighbor might not be. And as a community, what are we trying to to do for our kids? Again, 21st century learning for pre-K all the way up to the kids that get to enjoy this beautiful world. So, so this, this thank, you, thank you for your comments. This is something that we've wanted to add in Abington for years, yeah, but we never means. had the space. And so when we were promoting this building, one of the things we said to people was, and this will enable, this will give us the space to, to have a full day kindergarten program when we're able to put it in place. So we have the, so before we didn't have the money or the space. Now we have the space, and so this is a budget priority to get the money. Because I'm very proud of the kindergarten work that's done in Abington right now. It's amazing. When I was in kindergarten, we used to glue macaroni to a plate. And I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, you, they do I, amazing work. Yeah. I, I know some of the kindergartners in Abington, and I have family that uh, my sisters, my nieces and nephews go to Abington. There's seven of them. Our and kindergarten and teachers they, they do a great do job. Work. I yep. just want all kids in Abington to have that full day experience opportunity. Thank you. So okay, it's a priority. <coughs> um, so in terms of the, the major increase page, and this is where we can um, get into some more of the, the details and answer some of your questions. Um, so this increase by major category page takes us from the uh, twenty, the current twenty one million nine hundred eight thousand three hundred forty two dollar budget we're in now, to a preliminary budget of twenty three million seven hundred sixty three uh, six hundred thirty one dollars. Um, here were some of those assumptions I talked about in the beginning, um, and and um, other other items play out. So the salary account, it's anticipated will increase by $576,209. There is a, there is a contractual obligations slash 150E. Uh, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 150E, that is the enablement for the district to negotiate its contracts with all of its, uh, with all of its employees. <coughs> We're at the end of the three-year cycle. We're currently um, in that process now in terms of negotiating uh, contracts, that's an enablement um, for us to negotiate. If you don't have an enablement that forecasts what you could potentially um, spend in your salary accounts in your budget, then you don't have it next year, then you have to go find it, which means you have to cut people if you don't get that money because people have to get paid for the work that they do. 80 to 85 percent of our budget is paying people for the work that they do. The rest of the money is keeps the lights on and buys the materials and supplies we need. Um, the new positions that I outlined in that, in that first couple of slides uh, are included here for $250,600. Um, there's a subtotal there, programs of the districts. One of the positions I talked about um, creates program in the Avenue Public Schools We've done that over the last couple of years. We've been um, taking some of the contracted service providers in the schools and, and making them our employees so that we have better control over um, the services that they're providing. And that's actually, a, that's actually a very small increase to the special education costs um, for this time in the year, um, $150,084. Uh, we, we've got two notices this week that different placements where we send our children are uh, applying to the state to increase the tuition for uh, the students. We have a couple of students in those placements. Again, this is an early projection, um, so we'll have to see how that goes. April 1st gives us a better idea of what that number is um, because we have a better idea of what our student population uh, needs and looks like uh, by April 1st. The circuit breaker offset is the money that um, <clears throat> we get reimbursement 
from the state for the costs of special education. Um, for every dollar over forty thousand yeah, dollars, yeah. we spend. The state reimburses us at between fifty-five and seventy-five percent, and that's that circuit breaker offset. So we're trying to anticipate what that offset will be next year. So that's less of an offset than we uh, had for this year. Um, districts got burned with the number they put in. Um, Felicia's in contact with uh, the Department of Education, other business managers, in terms of numbers that they're using. So that decrease in the offset would increase our budget by $217,707. And there's another subtotal there of $367,791. Peter, before you go, <clears throat> I just, just, I know, but just to clarify, the, um, the salary doesn't include kin kindergarten's its own thing in this. Kindergarten's its own thing. The salary changes. Yep. This is kindergarten? Yeah. Yep. 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 Thank you. So then if we go to the next slide, um, other school services, um, transportation, special education transportation, electricity, and the five-year curriculum plan. Those are numbers that are actually easier for us to calculate. We have a transportation contract. Felicia knows what that's going to be at $28,650. Special education. Using today's transportation. Using today's transportation, right. If, if there are major schedule changes and there's a high school start time that, that's affordable, that number would go up. If it's beyond affordable, that, that number will stay the same because I don't think people will want to make that late start time. Electricity, natural gas, and materials. We've been working hard on getting a, a solar array uh, placed on top of this building. Um, we finally signed those contracts. These numbers anticipate that that project will be substantially complete in March. Um, so um, the, the, the company putting the solar array on the roof is, in, is incredibly invested in making this happen for us by March because they're going to benefit from harvesting that energy and we're going to benefit from um, us being able to use some of that energy to power this building and those costs are in that number, those cost savings are in that number, along with a power purchasing agreement that the town has engaged in for a solar field that's over an MBTA parking lot, I think in Randolph. Um, Five-year curriculum plan is the money um, uh, needed to um, fund um, our textbooks, workbooks, and resources. Um, we have a budget line item for it, and then we, um, and then we. Uh, also have uh, capital money uh, through a, an article at the town, and we increase this money in that. In your packets <coughs> is a list of those materials in that in that budget packet that Felicia has created for you. Um, so for a, for a total increase, uh, including kindergarten, of uh, twenty three million seven hundred thousand six hundred thirty one dollars. So this this kindergarten page ties into that. All right, anyone have any questions, comments? I want to thank uh, Felicia, and I want to thank uh, Chris, and I want to thank Mike. Um, I also want to thank the school councils and the uh, the people, <coughs> the directors, and department heads, because this process really starts in the end of September as those school councils meet and, and bring things to the building. The building, they bring things to us by Thanksgiving. Um, we meet uh, with our subcommittee. Um, we meet periodically with the town. And then from this point, again, this is a preliminary number, uh, we end up at a town meeting having not only a clear picture of what, of what our numbers are, but then a, a clearer picture of what the available funding is. And kindergarten is something we want to get. Okay, thank you. Um, now, we don't usually vote the amount until just before town meeting. Um, you, you usually vote the preliminary that can be adjusted down just before town meeting. Okay, so 
so that's what we're doing here. And I, you that's may want to. That's we submit to the town on behalf of the school community as a preliminary All budget. Right. So, um, do you want to go back into the regular session? Probably first? a good idea. All right. Uh, motion to move back into regular session. I'll make motion. <clears throat> Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, um, since we have had our budget hearing, we need a motion to submit for annual town meeting warrant a proposed FY219 budget figure of $23,700,631 is the amount requested from the school <coughs> department's operating budget. I'll make a motion. I'll okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Peter, can I, is, I should abstain from this. Oh, yeah. <coughs> My daughter's going to kindergarten next year, okay. so <laughs> we discussed it. Okay. Um, next, a motion to submit for the annual town meeting warrant a proposed figure of $14,000 is the amount requested for student transportation services to Abingdon students attending out of district location of schools as non resident students for the 2018 19 school year. Do you want to just explain it very quickly? Sure. We're required to provide transportation to our students that go to non-resident uh, vocational high school. This is an enablement to provide that transportation. The town is actually responsible for it. It's always been in our budget, so this is that enablement. All right, so do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, a motion to submit for the annual town meeting warrant an article to continue a re revolving account in accordance with MGL Chapter 44, Section 53E and one half. Said account to be funded by the fines levied against Abington businesses that violate state or local tobacco control laws, bylaws, and regulations. To be expended by the Abington School Department to fund substance abuse prevention programs not to exceed $8,000 for the ensuing fiscal year or take any other action. Can we briefly recap that one? All right, go ahead. So um, these are fines obviously levied against businesses that, that violate the, the tobacco statutes. Then they're put in an account to be spent by, they're basically spent by our health and wellness uh, department to um, provide a program uh, around um, anti-smoking, or anti-drug um, and then also through our, our nurse's office sometimes um, use these funds for that same uh, purpose. So. All right, do we have a motion? I make a motion. And we have a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Is there anything that we've missed in between here as we skipped around? I think we've hit everything. <coughs> okay, uh, new business and establishing the next school committee meeting <coughs> dates for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2018 at 7 p.m. will be our regular monthly meeting. Um, do we have any information on items? Just, uh, you've got both the North River Collaborative and the Reed's annual reports uh, in your packets. Um, on behalf of North River Collaborative, I just wanted to apologize. Not for me, but from North River Collaborative. They had a session um, for school committee members um, that they weren't best prepared for because I know, I know Chris, you went and you weren't able to get to the room. That wasn't your fault. It was good that you went um, to educate yourself on North River Collaborative. They, they promised they're gonna republish their schedule and an agenda and, and open it up uh, to school committees again. So I just wanted to let you know. We talked privately, but I felt like it was best yes. to recognize you for that. Thank you. Um, dates dates to remember? Uh, Wednesday, January 3rd is the Greenway Boosters meeting in the Abingdon High School Library. That actually has changed because of games, different games. It's actually Thursday, January 11th. So Thursday, January 11th is the Greenway Boosters meeting here at 7 p.m. Okay. at the Middle <laughs> High School Library. Okay. Um, January 10th, we have a building committee meeting here in the Middle High School Library. And then on January 15th is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, schools will be closed. On the 23rd is our next school committee meeting here at the Middle High School Library at 7 p.m. And then on the 26th, we have an in-service early release day. Peter, can I add the, the uh, trivia night 
Friday, this Friday, January 5th, just to recognize everything yeah. that they do. And Thank you. Hopefully it's no matter what the weather is, because I'm not letting them cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> true. Sure. We should be dug out from this storm by Friday night. Wonderful. Can they buy tickets at the door? I think it's sold out, honestly. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Last I heard. Okay. All right. Um, assuming we have no more questions, comments, um, let's make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make the motion. Have a second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. When, when you have two meetings, yeah. Well, because you're breaking up. <laughs>